Hey friend, do you know about this plugin? Uh, you know the one that's supposed to transform your mixes instantly, making them sound professional overnight? Yeah, that one. I think I bought like more than 75 of them over time. But it turns out that's not even the secret to a pro sounding mix. Now, don't quote me on this, but apparently if you don't know your tools like plugins pretty well, like Inside Out, they're not gonna mix your music for you. Yeah. Shocking. So when I got this, I asked myself, okay, you work on Cubase, Cubase has some plugins, so what if I'm sitting on the pot of gold? For the longest time, I thought stock plugins were like second grade tools, placeholders until you could afford fancy ones. But the reality is, the plugins we have in Cubase can go way deeper than most people think. Let's talk more about this. And by the way, if you're a Cubase user, you need to stick around till the end of this video because there's something I want to share with you. And trust me, you don't want to miss this one. Okay, now I want to cover misconceptions on working with stock plugins and also the advantages to work with stock plugins. Now, know that this is not going to be a video that will bash third-party plugins. Uh, you know, I use third-party plugins all the time. It's part of my workflow. I actually make videos on uh, some of them on this channel, but I also use stock Cubase mixing plugins and even gear for that matter, okay? So it's not about one versus the other. So let's start with the first stock plugin misconception. Stock plugins are low quality plugins. So for years, I thought stock plugins were okay, you know, but they weren't the real deal. And I was misleaded, like big time. And I'll tell you this, uh, stock plugins are quite good and high quality plugins. So if we take Cubase, for example, put it like this, the stock plugins inside Cubase are designed and coded by the same engineers and developers that worked on the Cubase audio engine and all those Cubase features we all love to work with. So why would these people work and design an amazing DAW like Cubase and give us access to only cheap plugins? That doesn't make any sense, <laughs> all right? Now, these plugins are very nice to work with. They are stable and they are good sounding plugins. Another misconception is that stock plugins are just for beginners. And again, this is completely false. I can understand where this comes from. Okay, someone who starts in music production is by default gonna work a lot with stock plugins or stock virtual instruments. Okay, due to the fact that that person probably doesn't want to invest in third-party plugins or gear for that matter, you know, not at this stage anyways. So yeah, by default, a lot of beginners are gonna tend to use stock plugins. That doesn't mean that all stock plugins are designed for beginners, okay? Two completely different things. Actually, a lot of pro mixing engineers use gear, third-party plugins, and also stock plugins, part of their mixing arsenal. They're gonna work with the tools they know well, and that will bring them the results they're looking for, okay? So that's basically it. Another one is that you can't get a polished commercial sound with stock plugins. Uh, again, that one makes me laugh a bit. You know, I actually made a full mixing course some time ago called the Ultimate Cubase Mixing Masterclass, where I put a lot of focus on the craft of mixing instead of focusing on the tools only. Okay. And to prove my point, I used only Cubase stuck plugins to mix a couple of songs inside the course. And the outcome and results sounded pretty professional in my book. So to say that you can't use stock plugins to get a professional sound is completely out of whack. It has nothing to do with the tools, but all to do with your understanding of the tools and your mixing decisions and talent. Now, the next one is actually very good. As stock plugins are limited and boring. And again, like far from it. You take plugins like Frequency 2, which is an amazing eight band EQ that has uh, mid-side processing, dynamic EQ. It's a pretty much advanced EQ. Uh, and same for the effects modulator or the multi-tab delay, a squasher, you know, or, or quadrafaz, or even reverence, which is a great reverb, one of my favorite anyways. I'm telling you, these plugins are quite impressive. It's not that stock plugins can sound great. It's that most people don't know them well enough 
to get the best out of them. So I decided to dive right in, did a lot of research, learned about every single mixing plugins we have inside Cubase. I wanted to fully understand how they behave, how to work with them, when to use them. And honestly, that completely changed my approach to mixing with stock plugins. And I came to the conclusion that yes, we are sitting on the pot of gold. And I realized two things. It's not about the tools, but it's all about the knowledge on how to use these tools. And that's exactly why I created this course, the complete guide to Cubase mixing plugins. So you can unlock that same understanding because once you know how these plugins actually work, your mixing workflow will speed up instantly. Okay, you'll make way better mixing decisions. You'll ease up your mixing process. And at the end of the day, I do believe it's gonna make your mixes sound better for the simple reason that you're gonna focus on the right things instead of being distracted by plugin settings and parameters you don't even understand. So if you wanna check it out, I'm gonna leave the link down below. You can also take advantage for the next few days on a special launch discount. Okay, now let's talk about the advantages on working with stock plugins. Now, one big advantage on working with stock plugins is speed. Now these plugins load pretty fast, so no authorizations uh, to go through, uh, no plugin scans when loading a session, no updates breaking things, which is quite annoying. You just open your DAW like Cubase and you're good to go. That simple. And even when I open the Cubase mix session where I only use stuck plugins, that session opens up so fast compared to my other mixing sessions where I have like a blend of all sorts of plugins. Like the difference is quite shocking. And as far as performance goes, since Cubase plugins are designed for Cubase, they are CPU friendly. So they don't take a lot of CPU power off your computer. And they are lower latency plugins and they stay rock solid even on huge sessions. And this is something to think of, especially if you have like a slower computer where CPU load can be a problem. I would advise you to maybe dive into stock plugins a bit more, okay? Just to free up a bit of CPU power while mixing, especially. Or if you're mixing huge sessions, uh, yeah, working with stock plugins in this case uh, can actually help a lot as far as uh, CPU power goes. Consistency is also a good reason to work with stock plugins, meaning that every project loads up perfectly, even years after. I actually have old sessions uh, where I used only stuck plugins. And since that point, I upgraded my computers a couple of times. And even if I'm using a more recent version of Cubase, when I open these old mix sessions, they open perfectly with all the plugins inserted, no missing plugins, opposed to other older sessions where I end up with a bunch of uh, missing plugin errors, which is so annoying. So a chance that I end up with a missing Cubase plugin error are very, very slim. And I also believe that when you mix with stock plugins, you make better purchase decisions. You're gonna tend to invest more on tools that are gonna be a good addition to the tools you already have, which is not a bad thing. So at the end of the day, it's not about getting the biggest plugin collection but it's all about mastering the ones you already have. And just realize that you already own a bunch of professional plugins right inside Cubase. So again, if you're a Cubase user and you want to get to learn all of these plugins in a very fast and efficient way, check out my course, The Complete Guide to Cubase Mixing Plugins. And even if you don't get the course, that doesn't matter. Just follow my advice on learning the tools you have and the tools you work with. And that also goes for third party plugins. If you have a bunch of plugins you'd like to work with, learn them inside out. Because reality is, it's not the tools you work with that will make you sound good. It's actually you and how well you know the tools you work with. 